This year, the theme for National History Day is Frontiers in History, Peoples, Places, and Ideas. And today, uh, I'm going to walk you through the theme with uh, an assist from our good friends at National History Day in Minnesota. So every year, the theme uh, for National History Day changes. So in the past, there's been themes like triumph and tragedy, breaking barriers in history, communication in history. This year, it's about frontiers. So the theme is the same for everyone. It's a really big idea that connects to your topic, and a lot of the topics will connect uh, to the theme. So no matter what you're interested in, we can usually find some sort of connection to connect your interest to the theme. So like I said, this year, the theme is frontiers in history, peoples, places, and ideas. There are four places that you need to think about your theme connection. So first you have to pick a topic that's connected to the theme. You have to consider multiple perspectives. So who was involved? Uh, what do they think about events? How did they react to events? Um, so what to determine the impact? We're not looking for a book report about your topic. We're looking for importance. So why should somebody be interested in your topic or why is something important that people should know? We're also looking for you to build your theme connection into your project. So you do have to connect explicitly in your project how we, what you're interested in connects to the theme. So frontier is defined as a geographical boundary. Uh, there's lots of examples here. So the Transcontinental Railroad, the Great Wall of China, the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, the 1947 partition of India and Pakistan, or the limit of something, especially the limit of what is known, what is possible, or what is accepted as status quo in society. So the discovery of the double helix, the Greensboro Four, women Air Force service pilots, photography of Lewis Hine, all of these things pushed boundaries, were discoveries, things that moved uh, our knowledge forward. No matter which uh, path you take, you should be able to identify or define the frontier in your topic. This is a must. If you can't connect it, then we have to find something different that you could take a look at. And your teacher can help you with this. So the frontiers don't change history by themselves. Um, just because we have like a geographical boundary that's changed, those are changed by people, groups, um, boundary lines involve the changing of places, also ideas. So if you're talking about a famous scientist who pushed our knowledge of, of a scientific field forward, like you know Florence Nightingale in nursing, or uh, maybe Steve Jobs with uh, technology, there's lots of different things that you could take a look at. So looking at people's places and ideas is a great way to start. So some questions you could ask, who led the change, who resisted the change, who was impacted by it, places, where did it take place, when did it take place, what was it like before and after the change, how did the location impact what took place, ideas, think about the goals of those involved, what were they trying to accomplish and why. So in history, there needs to be a topic that's 20 years old, it's not an official rule of National History Day, but um, it is very difficult to find reliable information on topics that are not a little bit older. Um, this really should be not, uh, history. So we're, we're looking for something that's at least uh, 20 years old. So that is, since it's 2022, the event should take place in the year 2000 or 2001 at the latest. Um, 20, 2002 would be okay, it just depends on the topic. So we don't know. And the reason that we don't do that is because we don't know yet the short-term and long-term impacts of more recent things. And it's hard to find research sources on the impact of things that are still going on. Considering multiple perspectives is crucial for history and research. So a perspective is defined as one point of view, one person's experience or side of the story. Multiple perspectives are present when a topic is viewed from more than one point of view, primarily those with different opinions or experiences. So why do historians care so much about multiple perspectives? Just looking at one point of view, just like in the set of binoculars, is only one part of the story. It's one-sided and incomplete. So what we're missing in this little analogy is everything that's going on over here. Looking over here, you can see multiple perspectives add sides to the story, especially those that are different. Looking through the lens uh, can change what you see because we have more information. So like in this example over here, you have Eisenhower signing the interstate highway system. And here's the actual building of it that's affecting a local community. In addition, there's a variety of perspectives within each group. So when you're talking about the Revolutionary War, for example, or the Declaration of Independence, there are different groups of people involved that have different perspectives and they all have different goals. Um, looking at, especially the Declaration, like each group has something different 
uh, to gain or lose by this document. So it's important to explore those different perspectives. So how many perspectives show up in your project? It just depends on the, on the subjects. Uh, so if you're looking for other viewpoints that looking to research, like if you have one person who agreed, try to find someone who disagreed. Or if you have a group that opposed something, look for who was supporting it. Looking at that impact. So why, why does the impact influence people's decisions? So these are things you need to incorporate in your final project. It's also going to depend on the topic. It doesn't mean that every point of view plays an equal role. Um, everybody has an opinion in history about something. And sometimes, depending on your topic, one group's opinion might be more relevant than others. So you need to figure out, as part of the analysis, is looking at who to include and, and who to mention. So what determine impact? This is one of the most important parts. This is the so what test. So what's missing from the annual theme? Impact words, right? So in here, influence, change, cause, effect, significance, transform, turning point. These are all missing from the theme. So we have to look for those in our research. So historians, including you, because everybody who writes history is an historian, does way more than tell a story. So they ask questions, they look for evidence, they analyze that evidence and then draw conclusions about what happened in a particular time period or place and then write about how that changed history. If you're looking at the contest from that perspective, analysis is a major part of History Day. So you can see that in any of the categories, historical arguments is a huge piece. It's also a big chunk of the standards work that History Day concludes. So if you're looking at uh, the language arts standards or some of the social studies standards, historical analysis is, is a crucial skill to learn. So what we're looking at is saying why our topic is important to history and why we should care. So don't forget about those multiple perspectives uh, that helps with your analysis. So if you're saying why something is important or not important, it's helpful to include the perspectives of the people that were involved. And last but not least, but build your theme connection to your topic. So the theme connection should be clear. You shouldn't have to explain it to the judges or to your teacher. They should be able to look at your work and understand, yes, this is how this topic fits the theme. It should just do more than just a few, uh, use a few theme words. One of the things that uh, we've noticed a lot in History Day is that sometimes the words in the theme only appear once in the thesis and in the conclusion. They should be spread out throughout your, your projects. There's also no formula for where to put the theme connection in there. Not having just said that, a lot of people will put it in the thesis statement and then in the conclusion, but there's really no uh, formula for how to put it. Uh, the, or where to include the theme connection, it's, I would recommend that it be spread all over the place so that you're frequently reminding your reader of how your topic connects to the theme. So thinking critically, there are often additional emotions or ideas connected to words. So a denotation, which is probably what you're most familiar with, uh, is the precise de dictionary definition of a word. So like for homework, school assignments, a student does at home. The connotation or the positive or negative ideas or feelings associated with a word. So homework for many students uh, brings up both positive and negative connotations. Uh, so that, but that is very different than a denotation. So going back to a frontier, beyond the dictionary definition, what other emotions or ideas do you have with the word frontier? So this is, these two here are the denotation. What is the connotation? What is the other emotions or ideas that come up when you hear the word frontier? Uh, so taking a look at this, uh, this if you're taking uh, U.S. history right now, or this year, you're going to see probably these two images at some point. Uh, talking about the American West, for example, the word frontier is often conveyed as the belief that the physical space at the edge of the Western sediment was uninhabited wilderness. That's a pretty common misconception about uh, American expansion West is that Americans were moving into empty space. And that's not quite true. This is problematic because there are many, many tribes, as you can see, that inhabited uh, this land. They weren't, uh, I got ahead of myself. These lands weren't uninhabited. The myth erases all the indigenous peoples who were there. This isn't uh, just true in American history, but any history that involves exploration, colonization, and assimilation. So how do you approach these topics? Looking at multiple perspectives, that's how you do it. So how did all groups experience the situation? So if, like if you're talking about the Transcontinental Railroad, how did, how did the tribes react to the railroad um, bringing more people through their traditional lands? How did control money or influence play a role? And how are people affected differently? 
you got to think carefully about your sources. Are your sources about indigenous history being written by indigenous authors? That's a really good question for anything is to look at who's writing the, the source that you're reading, because everyone has bias of some sort and you need to account for that in your uh, reading. Are there misunderstandings or stereotypes present in non-indigenous sources? When you look at your top project, it's okay to be critical about it. The impact of your topic may be positive, negative, or both. And in fact, in history, most things are a combination of both. There's, there's positives and negatives to everything, just like there is in, in uh, life. It's also okay to be specific about uh, tribal groups and identities. Uh, part of that multiple perspectives piece is understanding who, uh, whose perspective you're sharing. The other thing too, is that it's also, when you, when you write, you usually need to talk about what was done to people and how they responded and how they're still around today or not around today. That is, that is incredibly important. A lot of times historians tend to leave out some pieces of that and they will talk about only what was done to someone, not how they responded to it. And that piece can be just as important as telling the story. That is a very uh, brief overview of the theme. If you have any specific questions, please reach out to your teacher. Uh, good luck with your topic selection and your NHD research.